knifers, tis I, the Knife Detector, here with another knife video. I hope all of you are doing very well at this time that you're watching this video. It is probably midnight. However, rest assured, I have recorded this video more than likely a week or so earlier and more than likely in the evening. Uh, so I am comfortably in my recliner, probably at the time that... Uh, you're going to watch this video, or I might even be snoring at any given point. But in any case, I have a couple of things to talk to you about, and we're going to talk about this beauty right here. And that would be this vintage Camp Buddy Scout Type 9. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. And the way I'm going to go with this video is I am first going to talk about that Camp Buddy. And then after that, I'm going to talk about the rest of the eye candy I have here for you to behold. Uh, some of these other things you may not know or be familiar with uh, the makers of these knives. And I'm not going to mention the maker of this one. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. So guys, this is a Camp Buddy right here. This is a Camp Buddy. And what I did not know was that Camp Buddy knives are made by... Camillus. That's pretty much all I could find on this puppy because all the ones that I'm able to find on this as far as knives like these that are for sale or knives that that uh, you know I come across in forums they're usually in really bad shape and uh, they're rusty really rusty pitted and beat up as you can see I believe it is carbon steel although this knife is pretty good it's got a little bit of a shine there to the blade hi hi see and you can still make out where it says camp buddy right there and it's pretty clear unlike other knives i've seen of this type now also this knife still comes with the bail which a lot of these knives don't as you can see these are steel liners all the way throughout and uh, this is one of those knives that has this type of uh, rubber or plastic or Delrin up here. And this is a very durable knife. My best guess for this knife would be probably that it's from the 60s right here. Um, this knife right here has an awl. It has the can opener cap lifter. Uh, it's got itself a screwdriver right here as well. And um, it's interesting because see how right here... It's got the screwdriver and it almost feels like there should be something else here that's missing I'm not sure if it's supposed to have like the cap lifter here it's that that's just the way it was made uh, if anybody knows why that is let me know seems like there should be something here but it does not look as though it was machined or anything that's just the way it is all right so in any case I wanted to show you this bad boy and I think it's from the 1960s or so the 1960s, 70s, you know, when I was a kid in the 70s, mid-70s, late 70s, and, and I remember, you know, a lot of people had these knives in their pockets. This harkens back to a time when people didn't carry knives that were extremely expensive, or they didn't carry knives because, you know, they wanted to show off. They carried knives because, really, they just, they wanted something that worked something that functioned. If you needed it to cut, it cut. If you needed it to open a bottle of pop, it opened a bottle of pop. You needed it to poke a hole in something, you used it all. And a lot of people, a lot of guys back then, and girls were in the Girl Scouts, guys were in the Boy Scouts, and you know, they used to carry things like this because they understood how utilitarian they were and how, ne how much of a necessity they could be sometimes, you know? Um, if you have a knife and don't need it, that's great. But what if you don't have one and you need one? Well, there you go. A lot of people would carry these in their pockets because they were just so useful. They were useful tools. They weren't as concerned back then with brand names, right? And this one's got a cute little name, Camp Buddy, which lends itself to tell you uh, what its intended purpose was for, which is to use in the campground, right? Open up some soda pop, uh... Fillet yourself uh, or clean some fish, you know, cut yourself a couple of fish fillets, cut the head off, all the wonderful stuff you do when you go fishing, and then you cook it, right? And then you have something to cut your meat with, you know, uh, something to open up your drinks with, something like that. Open up your can of beans with, right there. So these were used because, you know, they were tools, and uh, people were not so uh, conscious of... Uh, of, uh, in my opinion anyway name brands as much as they were with can it do the job it was intended to do right and is it affordable and I bet you about a billion of these things were made 
but yet you'd be hard pressed to find one of these nowadays. Even if you look on eBay, you might not come across as much of them as you would think, right? Where did I get this one? I got this one as part of a knife lot, uh, which I was happy to get. And I found out that this knife is still plenty good. Let's listen to see if it snaps. Let's close this guy. Yep. Let's close the main blade so I don't cut myself. Pretty good. How about the awl? Does it snap? Yep. Ooh, powerful snap on that one. How about this guy? Flathead. Yes, they all snap and the bale works. When I got this knife, I looked at it. It had so much rust. As you can see, it still has some rust up in here. And you can see some discoloration. Uh, kind of goes down deeper in the metal. A lot of the shine is off of that area. Had to clean around this area. You guys know how I clean. I use some 2500, 2000 grit sandpaper and the, the 3000 grit also. And tried to clean it up a little bit. And I think that's as good as it's going to get. For a knife of this caliber and of this uh, type, I think that's good enough. You know, the fact that it had some rust on it tells me that it was used. It was probably used in some campground or by a Boy Scout or Girl Scout, you know? So I think this knife is pretty cool. Notice how it has the brass pins. It's got its own type of integral beauty. It's a utilitarian beauty that those guys that know it best are the ones that actually got to use this uh, when they were kids and it brings back memories you know and that's what it's all about but in any case we're going to set this bad boy down right here we're going to talk about now in this half of the video the other things that i brought to show you if you only wanted to see the video for this camp buddy then uh we're going to stop that at this point so let me show you some other stuff as you can see in my spread i got some smoky mountain knife works stickers here I got this cool sticker from my friend Tobias right here, Knife Chats with Tobias. You gotta check his channel out if you haven't. I don't know, I don't know who hasn't at this point, but you gotta check it out if you haven't. And then of course the cool bottle cap he sent me in that giveaway right here. Still got it, Tobias. Haven't tossed it. Still got it. So let me show you this bad boy. Now I did a video on this probably like three years ago. Uh, this is a Robeson Sure Edge. I think this knife might be from 40s, 50s. Look at that beautiful red bone right there. Check out that beautiful red bone. Bought this in the flea market. Bussy's flea market in San Antonio. Well, it's in the outskirts of San Antonio, maybe closer to San Marcos. And uh, I saw this, fell in love with it. The guy wanted 40 bucks, an older gentleman. And I wasn't sure if I was going to buy it yet until I picked it up. Because guess what I did when I picked it up? I dropped it. Man, you should have seen his face cringe when it hit the ground, put a nice little nick in it where it didn't have many, and uh, I let him know I do intend to buy it, and he felt much better after that. But uh, man, I felt terrible. And uh, it's a beautiful knife, you know. It's a trapper pattern. Uh, you got your, your uh, spade blade right here that's not sharp up here on this end. And then you have this clip point blade right here. This is carbon steel. Can you hear that? It's like carbon steel has a sound. I don't know. It has a different sound than other knife blades. But in any case, it's pretty sharp. It's a beautiful knife. Check out that rich color. This is a Robeson. Robeson Sure Edge. Got brass liners. In any case, I wanted to share that with you. Just have this out as eye candy today. That's the purpose it serves. Doesn't get very much use. I only pull it out every now and then. And then there's this one. I usually sometimes have something to show you, something to reminisce about, and something to tease you with. Have you ever seen one of these, my friends? And that's all I'm going to say, because this is an upcoming video. And by now you're saying, we'll turn it around. Let's get a closer look, knife detector. I'm like, okay. Here's the other side. Look familiar? Possibly like the other side? <laughs> Check out the little bale. Nice little brass loop. Check out the patina on that brass, though, guys. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that pretty? How many blades, you ask? It only got two blades, boys. One little one and one big one. That's all I'm going to say about that. So I'm going to leave that mystery there with you. See if you can figure out what it is. But in any case, I'll give you one clue. It's not made in the USA. And I know, you might be thinking Germany. But you'd be wrong. So in any case, we're going to set that right down here. 
And this is the knife detector signing off, saying, I'm going to make every effort to put out videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Those are going to be my new days from now on. Hopefully, I'll be able to do that. And uh, thank you very much. If you're new subscribers, I very much appreciate it. Thank you very much. God bless you. And to all my, my fellow subscribers and friends out there, you know, take care of yourselves. Uh, take care, guys. God bless. Keep your knife sharp. Keep your wits even sharper. Oh, yeah. And don't forget, check out my older videos, man. You might see a knife there that your dad used to have that you might remember or that your grandma had and you saw her one time, you know, clean a fish with or you might see something your uncle used to have or maybe you'll find a knife in my old channels that somebody gave you a long time ago you lost track of, you know. Go back, reminisce. I have several, several different uh, playlists that you can look at. And uh, it's not just uh, one kind of knife with me. Uh, it's like uh, one of my friends, Stuart, mentioned. It's a very eclectic mix. That's me. Like a box of chocolates. I know a lot of you get that reference. You never know what you're going to get.